Hi, people out there. What's up, SMB gang? We're back with another video. We're here. We're there. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. And today's topic on this video is going to be about mental health. And before you even get started into that, I need y'all to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time we post something. And you know, go run up some other videos and support your dudes. And don't forget to share it. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to share it, just like she said. What and, she said. And if you don't, we coming through the phone and we're attacking you. Yep. That's, just, that's just what that is. Yikes. But yeah, so Yikes. today's topic is about mental health and like, your friend and like like your like or your, like your friends or your close ones that's going through them, like check up on them you know but you definitely. never know like if they like actually going through stuff especially the ones that's that's distant most definitely and y'all spend so much time with each other back then and now they are distant they're not talking make sure they're all good for sure yeah check up on them you know most definitely so you're like I've got oh, you got got to now I was gonna say uh, what we're really gonna talk about is really depression and things like that. And how how you get depressed and how you can overcome and come out of depression or things that like that can cause or like trigger it most definitely most definitely and then I'm gonna help y'all out I'm gonna put a little number in there so if y'all do need some some help you can call someone talk to somebody right because if you can't talk to your family members or whoever you go talk there's to always them. a hotline you can call most definitely and I will figure that out for y'all and it will be in the description below right and at the end of this video. Exactly. So you wanna you wanna start to start the conversation? Uh, I mean, you can start from your own, from my own experience, from your own my. experience, on how you got depressed and what you did to get out of, or what triggered it, and what 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 did you do to get out of it? Oh, I had a lot of triggers. I say my main trigger was when I first when I was first like really starting to understand me and my mom like me and my mom was going like really homeless mm -hmm. like I didn't really like, understand it understand it till I was like 10 because it was like up until a certain age I was spoiled mm -hmm. like up until I was born I was spoiled but then like something changed and then like at a time like I didn't realize that we was going through like that we was like really going through homelessness like all I so know, when did you realize that this is like that's actually going down what age would did that happen? Like when well, we actually lived in a shelter. What age was that? That was that was up until I was twelve. What age So we had some some problems, but we were in here. What did, did you leave off right there? Um, you was. I left off where uh, where I was uh, living with my dad. Mm -hmm. On there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Oh, so, brother. So after so so after like I was living with my sister, like I started living with her after my nephew turned uh, he was almost a year. So then I went to go live with my dad, but then like like everybody was telling me your dad and I go take care of you but it, me as a kid I didn't want to listen to that's your father that's mm -hmm. that's that's the thing that was the only thing that was going on mm -hmm. in my head it's my dad that's all I cared about right but then like I didn't really like I really didn't have to I learned that le it took me living with him that whole year to learn that lesson I thank him for teaching me how to uh, teach me how to uh, grind and uh, get uh, my own hustle thank you for that and also showing me what what a man shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. I thank you for that lesson too. Most definitely. But other than Give that, it up. <laughs> Give it up. That, other than that, I stopped living with him. Uh, yeah, that's when me and that uh, that's when me and my mom had lived in a shelter for about almost a year, like almost like eight months. Then that's when they found us a uh, found us a house in uh, Vallejo over a lottery. Uh, living out there for almost a year. Didn't really want to talk to nobody. Mm -hmm. The only person I talked to was a security guard. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was actually from the city. No, definitely. So when I did her, look, it took me like three months to connect to, with anybody at that school. Then it was like, then after that, I had some best friends. Mm -hmm. Still talk, like we still text here and there. Like they be like, when are you finna come back to Vallejo? You, yeah. <laughs> you was gonna ask a question. You was gonna ask a question. Yes, you made a statement. You said at one point you felt like you were depressed and you were. How, what was the term that you used that you... Introvert? 
No, you mm-hmm. said that you were depressed, but you distracted myself. Distracted yourself. Because that's when, like, like, that's when I started to like really like realize. I'm like, what? I'm like, why do I feel like I like? That's when I'm like, I started to notice like, why do I don't? Why don't I want nobody around me? Mm-hmm. At first, I wanted I wanted to be around everybody. Now I just don't want to be around nobody. Mm-hmm. So my question is, looking back. At the time, maybe you thought you were distracting yourself. Looking back, were you distracting yourself or were you trying to hide it? In a way, I was trying to hide it because it took me it took me a while to open up. To because uh, the only person that really knew about my depression was my mom because she she has depression, so she kind of noticed it. So then, like I say, the only person that really that really came up to me about it because it got it got worse over the years, like. Right when I met y'all, that's when I really started to hide it because it was like, okay, I got good ass friends like that I can really like come like talk to, but it's like I still wasn't comfortable talking like coming to them about like my problems, my depression. You didn't know it's like that because it was like, like but then what was funny, Rolo picked it up. Oh, yeah, Rolo, he pulled me to the side one day. He was like, Are you good? He's like, he's like, dude, you ain't been talking, like, you ain't been talking, talking or texting us for like a week, like you just disappeared off the bat. I'm like, I'm good. Like I just got my own, I just got my own mental problems I got right now. I'm good. Mm-hmm. He's like, you sure? He's like, he's like, if you need to talk, I'm right here. I'm like, thank you, brother. I'm good. And it so how how old were you when you met them? This group? I was 15. It was my sophomore year around the time I met them. Like. Cause like, I, I was getting ready to cuss you out. Cause I was gonna say you mean you was going through all that and you didn't tell me. <laughs> I, I was getting ready to let you have it. <laughs> I should be cussing him out. You didn't tell me. <laughs> you, you get a, you get a, you get a, a pass. <laughs> but the only reason why he could talk to Rolo because they went to the same school. I was going to Lincoln. Okay. And I say so I wasn't. You know, the only time I could meet up with him was after school. For real. It took me a while to get to know him because it was like, like for a minute, like he just had like, like, like a mug on his face. Like he's an ass. That's why, like, like every time, like I look at him, he'll look my way. I look at like my family, I'm like, dude, does he want to fight me or something? Every time I look at him, he mug. You. And I don't, I don't, I don't ever ass. catch myself really. I just be looking. I just don't. Um, he's an ass. He's very. Different. And then like, when I actually like talk to him, like, oh, he hella cool. Right, right. But you don't. You have to get through the exterior to, yeah. to learn that. And then like, and that's when I that's when I start to catch him. Like, oh, yeah, he likes to get he likes to give people a hard time. Okay. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Well, I'm gonna go there on film just for a minute. But um, I am your mom, and you, you can tell me stuff. You can talk to me. I'm I'm the cool mom. Like, I get it. I understand. I'm here. Okay. I don't. When I call you my son, I don't take that lightly. I mean that. Nah, she playing. That's your auntie. Playing. We mean that. You need something, you yeah. say something. You say something, absolutely. Thank you. Okay? Absolutely. You can call anytime, anytime, 24-7. We're here. Because believe me, we that. understand. <laughs> believe me, we got our own crap. We've so, yeah. been through some shit. Yes. Ourselves and with our kids. We're know. here. I'm a good child. I don't, I don't go through nothing. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I'm like, you know me. I'm solid. Yeah. Too solid. But, uh, uh, so, are you, so would, getting back to the video, would you consider yourself depressed now? I say, I when I consider I'm not as depressed as I was before, mm-hmm. I still have little triggers Moments here and there. Mm-hmm. But it's like now I know how to cope with it. I know how to get over it. I was helping. Like, because it was like, Back then, that's when I really would just let it take a toll. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, since I'm feeling this way, I'm gonna just feel this way and just not talk to nobody. Most just definitely. Leave me the hell alone. Mm-hmm. And what are you doing now to cope with your? Actually, your opening up about it. Mm-hmm. Like, I try not, like, try not to take it out on, like, try not to take it out on the next person because it's, it's not them. Mm-hmm. It's, it's me going through something and. I know, like, like, yeah, like, like here and there, like, most of the time. Now I'm starting to talk to y'all, open up, open up about it. But it was like before. Oh, yeah, couldn't it, do it. it. Couldn't do it. Most definitely. Do you think it, it was like, oh, I, can, I kept a smile on my face. You didn't even know I was depressed. Do you think because you're getting older that you can talk about it? I say yeah, because it's like now that I'm getting older, it's more and more and more responsibilities. But also on top of that, I'm starting to learn how to overcome those like mm-hmm. responsibilities and like those are like uh what's that word those, those obstacles mm-hmm. yeah most definitely 
it, can I ask this? And and I'm asked the questions that I'm asking you. I'm asking you if you haven't figured out because I suffer from the form of depression. Would you say that you're able to talk about it now, or do you think that you might be more able to talk about it now because you have the language to talk about it? Yeah. And what I mean by that is like when I was young, when I was 11, 12, 13, when I was six and seven, I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know how to verbalize mm -hmm. something is not mm -hmm. right. Because how do you say something is not right when you don't understand what's wrong? Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. No, it makes a lot of sense. That's so right. I didn't have the language to communicate something is very wrong here. I didn't get that language literally until I was in my 20s. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder then was if this... you're able to talk about it now because you had life experience to teach you that things are a little off yeah. or a little different than what others might be experiencing. Something's and so you're right. able to, to put words to something not feeling right. That was your early 20s or your late 20s? I think I was in my mid 20s. Mid 20s. When she, I remember her. Uh, no, I was 21. Mm. I was 21. When was it that you found that blurb and you sent that to me? When were, how old were you when you found that? And you said, Joey, does this sound like me? I don't remember that. But what I can tell you is the night that I turned 21 years old, we sat at the kitchen table on Wildy Street with Auntie, it was me, Auntie Judy, and Mommy. And I had been having nightmares, mm. really bad night, like I'm waking up in like a cold sweat. And I explained to them, I, I recounted one of my nightmares, what had happened in the nightmare. And Mommy very calmly said, tomorrow we're gonna go to the doctor, it's gonna be okay. And I was like, huh? I just thought I was having night. You know, mm -hmm. I thought it was normal that people have nightmares. Like, mm -hmm. because it was telling like you have the same one, like same one reoccurring or something like that. Then um, it was something like that. Yeah, if you have the same one repeatedly, it's was it the same one repeatedly? It was the same one repeatedly, but it would extend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. like it would be a little bit extra. Mm -hmm. like, there would be a piece added on to it. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. But it was very demonic. Mm -hmm. Like and that thing. that was the problem is that it was demonic and it, it was scaring the hell out of me like mm -hmm. I, I literally I was afraid to go to sleep it was so bad mm -hmm. and they were like yeah we're going to make sure that you get to the doctor and I was like okay they tripping and it was at that point that I realized okay something is not right mm -hmm. so what happened oh. what happened at the doctors oh I'm sorry so I went to the doctor and they put me on medication. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, I was taken off work, and I had pretty much a nervous breakdown. Mm. Um, and I was off work for quite a while. Um, mm -hmm. I was on state disability until that ran out. And my job basically said, you know, the disability has run out. You need to come back or you're gonna lose your position, we're not gonna hold your job for you anymore. Mm -hmm. And I told my doctor, and my doctor was like, go back to what, for what? Mm. Like, you can go back, but do you think that that's gonna help your situation or make it worse? And it was clear to me it would make it worse because my job was adding to my stress. Um, just a real long story short, it was adding to the stress, so I decided to let my job go. Um, and at some point, started working another job, nervous breakdown came, and it was like the world fell apart. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was diagnosed, diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And my world was just like turned upside down. And like you said, at some point, I had forgotten that, but I had sent her an article, I think from a newspaper from the, or a yeah. magazine or something like that that talked about depression or bipolar disorder, something like that. And I sent it to her and said, you know, do you think this is me? And she was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Can you recall what the news, what the newspaper said? Well, it just, des it described how you have these, 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 these two different people in you, mm -hmm. you know, one minute, you know, you're weepy, cry, quiet on the low end. And the other minute you're like manic, like she, like, you know, like sometimes she has to get out of the house. She mm -hmm. can't stay in the house. She got to get out, got to see people, got to be out there. Mm -hmm. And she's, and you can't sit her down. Mm -hmm. The next minute she's quiet. 
you know, reserved, super reserved. And she go from these these two major extremes, and she can go in that extreme all in the same day, mm. in the same hour, mm -hmm. or be up um, on it for days at a time. And no can't sleep. sleep. Mm. You know, and it and it it, is, it described her to a T. Mm -hmm. She said she sent it to me, and she's and when I called her back, she was crying, and I was like, yeah, this is absolutely you, mm -hmm. because she never had really had it put to her that way. This that this is what. It explained, on. it gave her some words to explain what was going on to her. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Absolutely. Do you consider yourself depressed right now? Every day. Every like, day. is it like, from a scale of 1 to 10, how, how bad is the depression? On a good day, I would say I live about a 7. That's a good day? On a good day. Not going on right now. No, I understand that. Yeah. No, I understand but, that. But I would say on, a, on an average day, I, I live, I've learned to live at about a seven. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where I function at. Mm -hmm. And then there are bad days when it's 10, when it feels like it's 15, mm -hmm. where I feel like I've tilted the scale. Mm -hmm. But I have to be on my medication. You know, like I know when it's above that seven, mm -hmm. that medicine, like I cannot miss. Mm -hmm. I have to be on point with the medication. Or I spiral. And that's the only way you can cope with it right now? That's the only way I can cope with it right now. Well, back then, how did you cope with it back then? Um, it, it was trial and error, honestly. Um, I did a lot of spiraling. I was up a lot of nights. Um, I was very argumentative. I was fighting, physically fighting people in public. Um, Crazy. Like, I, I never initiated. Mm-hmm. The altercation but you'll finish it but I, I i was fine to finish it mm -hmm. did not mind um and still can very much be that way but i fight to not mm -hmm. be her mm -hmm. every day it's a fight to not be her because literally you can walk up on me and get an ass whooping it wasn't meant for you mm -hmm. So I, <laughs> that's what you get for being in my face. <laughs> that's what you, you get. What? Are you annoyed? <laughs> Knocking you down. Stop playing. You know. So, Always out to the face. So <laughs> I, I really, I try not to be her, mm. but she's in there uh -huh. every day, and and it's 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 a lot. Um, yeah, there was so you know tears, just tears and tears and tears, just days on end, just tears. Mm. Um, a lot of late phone calls. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You know, there was the, the weight gain. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to be almost 400 pounds. Mm -hmm. You know, I was well over 350 pounds at one time. Mm -hmm. And it just. And do you feel like you. Out of control. And do you feel like you losing the weight had. I mean, you losing the weight, has that changed it? Or are you still at the seven? It's helping. It's, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still at the seven, but it, it is definitely helping. In which way? I, I feel better about myself. I feel more. It's hard to look in the mirror and start to see something, somebody that you don't recognize. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But then in reverse, now that I've lost, you know, over a hundred pounds, mm -hmm. again I'm looking in the mirror and I'm seeing somebody I don't, I don't know, mm -hmm. because I haven't been this weight mm -hmm. since I was in high school. Mm -hmm. So I, d I don't know, like it, it's, they call it body dysmorphia. Mm -hmm. Like what I see isn't necessarily what everybody else sees. Mm -hmm. So that's like a whole other level. And dealing with the weight loss, there's hormone changes mm -hmm. that women in particular go through. I'm not sure about men, but I know that women go through and you have to wait for your hormone levels to, to level out and that causes depression. So that mm -hmm. adds to what I'm already going through. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it's, it's a lot. Most definitely. In a head trip, having the surgery and losing weight the way I lost it very quickly. Um, and then having to be able to maintain it or seriously, you could lose your life mm -hmm. because I've altered my internal organs mm -hmm. for the surgery. So that's a whole other head trip that causes depression. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, but I was in a, a health position mm -hmm. that I had to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like do it or you're going to just let yourself fall apart till you die. Most definitely. And I wasn't, you know, that wasn't it. So it was just, you know, it's, 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 
It's a daily struggle for me. Mm-hmm. With lots of medication. Um, and not hiding it. Right. Just kind of living. up a little bit? Me? Yeah. Just kind of living in my truth. Um, mm-hmm. Day to day. Most definitely. Living in the struggle. Most definitely. And, and making one decision every day to make tomorrow better than today was. And how often do you talk about depression? Um, when I feel like it's needed or necessary. When I need to talk about it, or if I come across somebody that I feel like it might help, mm-hmm. talking about my journey, mm-hmm. I'll talk about it to encourage somebody to let them know that it is possible. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. I just died. I just died. Why would you keep going to stuff like this? What? It died. It died, bro. It died, bro. It died, bro. You can still hear me though, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So, um, oh, no, we're gonna be the video. Yes. If, if it still helps in a way that lets people know that it's possible to live with depression and it's possible to make it, like just because you're depressed and it seems uh, like ah. tomorrow is dark, you know, that the sun does still rise tomorrow gonna come back up you know maybe it's not tomorrow tomorrow maybe it's three tomorrows from now but the sun does come back up and you just have to hold out (laughs) (laughs) kind of until you get there this is too funny hang on folks we're still here we're here we're there we're We're everywhere Even in the chandelier. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. We're here, we're there, we're Yeah, but I asked you that about um, whether or not you were, but with the language? No, about where you, when I asked about hiding it, Mm. I asked you that because I hid it for a long time. Yeah. Because I was afraid of it. Like, I didn't. It's like, what is this? And why do I feel so strange? Why yeah, do like, I feel. I felt the same way because, like, all my friends knew me as, like, I was the ha- I kept a smile on my face every day. Like, no one would know if I was mad or right. not. So, like, for me to come talk about depression and have friends, I don't want to hear that. I didn't want to hear that. But see, I didn't even know. Like when I say I didn't have the language, like literally, I didn't know it was depression. I didn't know what the de- like. I literally didn't understand what I was going through. Right. All I knew is that everybody thought I was this bad kid. I was acting out. I was stealing. I was lying. I was cheating. I was um, you name it. I was doing it. Right. Everybody thought I was this bad kid. I couldn't explain why I was doing the things that I did. I knew that they were wrong, but I couldn't stop myself. You know, I knew that I felt very different. I knew that I learned differently than other kids. I knew that I had different ideas than other people. I did things different ways from other people, and I was just seen as a bad kid. Well, I didn't feel like I was a bad kid. I felt like I was a misunderstood kid. And then I started feeling like, okay, I don't feel good. But I don't understand why I don't feel good. I don't have a headache. You know, my throat doesn't hurt. What is this that's going on? Like, and and there was no words to say, I don't feel good. Well, what do you mean you don't feel good? I don't know. So when you get to that point, I just stopped talking. Because I'm saying I don't feel good and everybody's looking at me like, well, you're saying you feel fine. So at that point, I start hiding it. I stopped talking about it. So that's why I asked you, did you feel like you were hiding it or were you whatever else you said? I don't remember how you termed it. Distracted. Distracted. Distracted yourself from it. Because well, yeah, it just makes you wonder. Sorry about that, y'all. You know, the stand died. So we had to do a lot of running around to get charges that did not fit. Right. 
did not fit the thing. So you was looking at the ceiling for a minute, but oh, you know, we back. <laughs> do what you have to do. But I said, for me, I had to hide it because the living situation I was in and the people and the type of friends that I had. What you mean? What you, hold on. What you mean by that? Back then. Oh. Back then. Would you, okay, but I am those friends that you're talking about. So what do you? No, no not no, before. I, I, before I, oh. and during high school too. So what do you mean by that? Like, what do you like? What do you mean different? Because it was like not necessarily different, but mm-hmm. I say like uh, I was in the worst living situation than all my friends. Put it like that. You didn't feel they would understand. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like. I felt like I felt like like I'd be judged and shit. Like I, at that time, judge. Yeah, yeah we know. <laughs> yeah. High school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I was gonna open it, and it was, and that's that's when I that's when I started. That's when I then stopped like coming to school during. That's when I started to come to school during only to like second period. Like I missed like first period, like homework and first period, and second period because I literally sleep up until like ten or twelve, and wake up and go to school. That's mm-hmm. when my mom noticed I was going to because I'd sleep longer. Mm-hmm. I'd sleep 12 hours. I'd sleep throughout the whole 12 hours a day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then they that's when, like, that. yeah, that's when, like, that. that's when, like, I start, like, my grades drop. That's when Campos put me to the side. Mm-hmm. He was like, yeah, you've been real, he was like, you've been real off lately. Mm-hmm. Like, you just been, like, you just been real, like, really to yourself. I didn't think he noticed it. Because, mm-hmm. uh, Cause like he act like he didn't like me, but I didn't think he noticed it. But I told he him always acted like that. But but then like when he when he told me that, I burst out in tears. Mm. I started crying. Instantly I started crying. He hugged me, and I started crying harder. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like, bro, someone actually noticed. Notice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was like I don't know, but then like also like he also had to hit me with the hard facts. Like since my credits is low, I was gonna have to transfer. Mm-hmm. That put a whole nother depression. Whole nother level. Yeah. So then went to that school, didn't talk to nobody. Probably like a, probably one person came up to me. After that, we was cool. We was cool throughout the whole school year. But then it was like, uh, but then moms got injured at work. So then she couldn't work no more. So then it was to, so then like she couldn't, she really couldn't pay, pay rent to uh, pay the bills. Mm-hmm. So then, that kind of that kind of put another level of depression. So then I stopped. I stopped going to school for a month. Mm-hmm. Stopped going to school for a month. That's when y'all. That's when y'all started to hit me up because I stopped. I stopped. School, I stopped going to school. Stopped linking with them. I was just literally in the house sleep for twelve hours all day for a full month. Wow. Just trying to figure out, like what the hell is wrong with me? What the hell am I going to do in my life? Why am I living? Why am I on this earth? It's a whole bunch of questions. Just, just ask them. Just questioning my life. Mm-hmm. Like, why am I on this earth? It feels like I'm not even living for myself. What's the point of me being here if I'm not living for myself? Mm-hmm. Like that was the same question I asked myself every day up until I was like 19. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's when I got to. That's when I'm like, okay, I, I'm a, I, I'm an adult. But I'm not an adult, but I can still get somebody to give me some alcohol. So I'm gonna kill this depression with some drinks, with some alcohol. That's when we started. That's when, that's like, when we were that's, when, that's when I started linking with Woody more, mm-hmm. drinking more. Mm-hmm. That's when my body weight went from 140 to 120. Mm-hmm. Then, then, yeah, doing that, uh, doing that for up until our, that night of our 21st birthday. That's when I had my epiphany. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was, it was a crazy night. That's when that I. Was that's a crazy that's night. when I. That's when I had the epiphany. I'm not. I'm not just gonna live my life in this in this dark mm-hmm. hole anymore. I can't. Mm-hmm. I can't do it. Can I tell you when I had my epiphany? Yeah. I almost killed my friend on the bridge. Ain't no way. Auntie Christina. Ain't no way. We were driving because I same thing same like I my story mirrors yours. Um, we were driving, leaving East Bay, coming back to San Francisco from a club. No, I was drinking. And I was drunk, and I fell asleep, and I woke up just before I hit one of the medians on the at the toll gate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that that happened that happened to us, and I was driving. Remember that? Me, 
But it wasn't no, it wasn't nothing like that though. But I, it was like that. Oh. <laughs> it was like that. It was like that. It most definitely was. We was, where were we at? We were somewhere in Vallejo, and you know, and we were drinking. We can you at, bring him here so I can grab him by his neck? <laughs> we was, we was drinking. We was there until like four, five o'clock in the morning. Oh my! God. And I'm like, well, you know. No, I mean, I'm gonna get us home. You know, there's no, no, no doubt about that. But I fell asleep. And then my partner, who was sitting in the passenger side, before we hit the, the thing in the middle, he woke me up like, "Bruh, you for the hit the day?" <laughs> I'm like, "Okay, oh, no. I'm up now." <laughs> Got everybody home. Got everybody home. Wow. Got wow. everybody home. Yeah, it was a great night. That night was crazy. It was a crazy oh, night. Oh my god. Crazy, crazy I, night. I, I can I can totally relate. The, your, our stories are very parallel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. It was like it was to the point where we left the club. I started throwing up, but then it was a night before. It felt like I had alcohol poisoning. It was to the point where like anything I put in my system, it came back up. I had one of them nights too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. They thought everybody thought I was gonna die because it was like I just I just. Was that the Kept, night you were at my house? Or was that, that another was, night? That was that was that was one that was <laughs> that was before. <laughs> that was like a year before this night. That was like yeah, that one was two years ago. This one was last. What you year. mean? When was you at my house? When we, we, we the home double, the night one when I had. Oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was like, you'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> so because been there, done that. What was your what? What have you been through with depression Mom? and things like that? Um, my situation is a little bit different in that um, mine was caused by a, situ a specific situation, mm -hmm. and that being um, the death of my son. Mm -hmm. So um, my son died three months. He was three months old. Mm -hmm. And um, I went from having, like, the most wonderful life you know, loving husband, beautiful baby, surrounded by family, mm -hmm. to the most horrible thing that could possibly happen. Mm -hmm. um, I was actively in church, you know, serving the church, tithing, working a good job. You know, I just felt like I was doing what I was supposed mm -hmm. to do. You know, I felt like I was in a good place mm -hmm. you know and so I essentially had what I came to term as a crisis of faith in that I felt like how could I have suffered the loss of my son um after number one we prayed for him mm -hmm. for years because we we weren't we weren't getting pregnant mm -hmm. So we prayed for him for years and years and years. And then he finally comes and I have a beautiful pregnancy and three months and he's gone. Just one way we woke up and he's, he wasn't responsive. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it threw me into a, a, a depression instantly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Thankfully for me, and that's because it was a very specific situation. Um, it, the cause was easy to see, you know, and, and everybody around me was watching me because they knew I lost Darren. Mm -hmm. um, so I had some people around me that was very special. And that mm -hmm. number one, I had my best friend, one of my best friends um, who had lost her mom was like, you need to go see a therapist. You know, and I was like, I ain't gonna see no therapist. Mm -hmm. She's like, no. She says, you need to go see a therapist. Mm -hmm. And she explained to me how her therapist her, helped her work through like all those questions that are going through your head mm -hmm. about just everything mm -hmm. to help answer, to help you, to help you answer those questions. She's mm -hmm. not gonna answer them. You gonna answer them yourself, but mm -hmm. she's gonna help you answer those questions. I had a second friend. She was actually one of my employees who had lost a daughter. Mm. And she contacted my best friend and said, you know, can I call Jolene and, and think she'll, you know, talk to me. And she was like, yeah, call her. You know, if she wants to talk, you should pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. 
And so when she called, you know, I respected her. So I was like, yeah, I picked up the phone. Mm-hmm. And she and she 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 poured into me, you know, because she had been through what I was going through. Mm-hmm. And um, she actually got me to go to a group where there were parents that had lost children. Mm-hmm. One of the hardest things I've ever done. But one of the most rewarding. And I say that because um, one of the hardest things I think about depression is that you feel that you're alone. You think you're the only person going through it. You'll be in a really dark place, sleeping all day, hiding stuff from people, crying a lot, not sleeping, all of those things. Um, I would be, I would do Sudoku puzzles for hours. Like I would just go from, take a book and just do the entire book. Hard ones. I screw the easy ones. I want the hardest ones you can do, the ones I had to figure it out. You know, I was doing cross with just I had to keep my brain. Even in, when I was in therapy sessions in the group, I would be doing Sudoku puzzles. And I told them, I'm listening to you. I will participate. Mm-hmm. But the anxiety at that point, because mm-hmm. depression is often paired with anxiety, had me, I had to keep my hands busy. Mm-hmm. But being amongst other parents who had lost their children, and they were different stages. Some had lost infants like I had. Some were grown parents that lost adult children. But the whole gambit, um, and they helped me see that I wasn't the only one feeling the way that I was feeling. Mm-hmm. And that was comforting to know I wasn't alone. Um, then I had, and this is where I, this is where I guess I was blessed because you guys felt very, very much alone and I can understand why you felt alone No, and Nora. Um, Cause I didn't understand what Nora was going through and then I was in college. So Nora was going through it while I was in LA. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, if I just, I would drop off the face of the earth just like you did. I wouldn't call nobody. I wouldn't pick up the phone. Nora would be texting me. I wouldn't respond. And so finally Nora would send me a message. Uh, if you don't respond or call me, I'm gonna show up at your door. And she had a key. <laughs> It was no and problem, and, and yeah. Nora, Nora would come, you know, I knew that she would show up at my door and so I would call her. And then my best friend would do the same thing. She's like, uh, I'm on my way. Mm. So I, I was, I was blessed in that I was surrounded by people that knew me. So when I started to withdraw, they wouldn't let me mm-hmm. essentially, Most definitely. you know, and because they were close enough to know what would have happened to me. I didn't have to go through that part that you guys went through where you, you didn't want to share. They already knew. Mm-hmm. They already knew. So sometimes we didn't even talk about the situation. They would just be there with me. They'd take me to a movie, to go out to dinner. Mm-hmm. We don't have to talk about it unless I want to talk about it. Most definitely. You know? And as it got, as I went through therapy, group and individual, um, Prayed a lot, you know. It took me a while to, to 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 realize that you know God didn't do this to me. Mm-hmm. This was, you know, it was it was Darren's time, you know. So I had to I had to work through my my faith issues as well. Yeah. Um, so that took time, and I was blessed in that regard too because when we were at the, when we left the hospital, we called my husband called a friend of his who's one of the mentors at my church. Mm-hmm. He contacted the bishop. The bishop had, I don't know who called who, but by the time we got home, we had ministers showing up at our house who had all lost children. Mm. Pouring into us. This is the same day he he passed. So they didn't let us feel like we were alone. Mm-hmm. So in that regard, I had we had a lot of a lot of support. Um Still, as you know, even though you have support, you're going to have your moments. So I went through times when I, I didn't sleep, when it just like, it's really hard for me around his birthday. It's really hard for me, which happens to be your birthday, but it's really hard for me around the time that he died, which unfortunately was right before Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. So Thanksgiving is difficult for me. Um, it's hard for me on Mother's Day. You know, that same young lady that called me and told me about when her daughter died and got me into therapy every Mother's Day. I get a text from her every Mother's Day. On his birthday, I get a text from her every year, without fail. This has been since 2008. 
you know, so that's the kind of support that I still have. But does the depression still happen? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it, as long as it's been, you know, I went through some issues with, you know, my divorce. I, I, I got depressed through that. This one, same thing. You know, I, I will, I will get in the car. I will be in your drive. I'll be in your parking spot when you come back to the house. Mm. I will be at you. I'll be on your couch. I'll be pushing you out of your bed. I had a key. So she you know, just said that too. She 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 would she would do. I mean, Nora, Nora was you know. This is this is my this was my 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 definite. Uh, what I'm gonna call you. You you my just my this is my favorite therapist right here. Mm. A lot of late night calls. Um. But, so I get, I think, I guess, although it's, it's still difficult, I think I'm still blessed in that because my situation is very public, I didn't go through the isolation that you guys had to go through. Mm -hmm. So that part is different, I think. So what are you doing right now to cope with all of that? Um, Ignore says it's day-to-day -day struggle. Mm -hmm. So like um, I would go through times when I would sleep all the time. I went through the whole sitting and playing on my Xbox or PlayStation all day long. Mm -hmm. um, I have to make a conscious effort to uh, to come upstairs mm -hmm. to interact with the family. Um, you know, I I I I I know when I'm going through it, and sometimes. I let it ride for a minute, mm -hmm. but other times I was like, no, I need to go upstairs and talk, hang out with mom. I'll mm -hmm. come upstairs. Let's go do a puzzle. Okay. You know, let's have dinner together tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, other times I'm, I'm, I want to go, I want to be isolated, but mm -hmm. I try not to make that be like an everyday thing. Most definitely. Right. So like, I know I, I can feel it. For yourself. Mm -hmm. Like right now, because everything we're going through right now, I'll call my doctor and say, I need to be back on my meds. I need, mm -hmm. I need them to kind of even me out. Mm -hmm. Otherwise I'll be crying all the time. Mm. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be. I don't want to be that weepy Susan all the time. Mm -hmm. So, but definitely with maturity and time, I think I've learned to uh, see it and feel it in myself. I've learned how to, like you said, to I can hide it if I need to, mm -hmm. but around my family, I just try to be me. Um, I've learned to talk about it. Um, and like Nora says, when I talk to, when I'm around people that I feel that can benefit from my story, I try to share it. Um, but I think the biggest thing is like, it's like day to day, I actively try to do things that will, um, combat the depression. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, it's something that you, I think I'll be done with that the rest of my life. Well, definitely. Well, definitely. Well, definitely. Um, Cause I, like for me, what I didn't say is I slept through high school, literally. I slept through the 10th grade and failed and had to repeat the 10th grade to graduate high school. Mm -hmm. um, I drank through my 20s and I didn't really start to come out of it, I would say until my 30s, mm -hmm. where I really started to take care of myself. So depression doesn't, it's not gonna, well, I won't say it's not gonna go away, but it's not just a neat little package that you can take a pill and move on and move on mm -hmm. like that's not it has it. to be managed it has to be managed and yeah. it, it comes and goes it, it, it lives in waves and it, there, there's levels to this thing oh, <laughs> yeah. you know what like i'm saying you can, see some, you can see something that can trigger like it's triggered yeah like that yeah. and you, you'll move in and out of it and I, I i talk we talk a lot about me being in a fog and I lift out of a level of a fog, and all of a sudden I'll be able to see things I couldn't see before. Mm -hmm. You know, and that sounds crazy, but it's it's true. Mm -hmm. Like even clutter and mess, like I, I'll see stuff that I I could not see before, and all of a sudden, right now today I cannot handle it anymore, and I have to clean it all up. Mm -hmm. It was the same same exact way yesterday, and yesterday it was fine for me. But today, because I've lifted through that one little level of fog, it's no longer acceptable or tolerable, mm -hmm. and I have to fix it. Most definitely. It's, it's weird. Yeah, I used, to, I used to tell my friends always, you know, they could tell, you could tell my mood by how my house looked. Mm -hmm. If my house was clean, 
I'm in a good mood. If oh, my house well. is messed up, there's like dirty clothes and beds not made, mm -hmm. dishes in the sink. I'm not my head, if my house is cluttered, my head is cluttered. It's a reflection, direct reflection. Direct wow. reflection. Yeah. yeah. Cuz I don't I don't I don't like clutter. <laughs> I like to be I, I like to clean. And she's been like this all my life, bro. <laughs> You know, so we have some okay. dirty, we have some dirty ass. Oh my so, brother! So, so let me see. So let me say this. Now let's speak to my depression. You know how I would let you go long periods of time with your room being messy mm -hmm. because I was depressed. And then you know how on days I would say, today we we clean mm -hmm. this mess because I that day I was coming out of a fog mm -hmm. and I could no longer stand to look at the mess. Mm -hmm. Like, I literally would wake up and say, I can't do this today. No, we're talking about not just, oh, a pair of underwear on this side. No. A pair of underwear on that side. I'm talking about bags and bags of totally two gallon trash bags. Bruh, I'm talking about, you can't see the floor, bro. If it's on the floor, oh, okay. oh that was a mess. And I but you gotta also think about, it was four boys staying in one room. Yeah. And they, they would they would hate when I would come over because I would come over and start throwing stuff away. If they thought I was bad, they thought I was the warden, she was the warden extraordinaire. Yeah. Uh, I just left my toys all over. All it was terrible. It was it was But see, you do that in my house, you come back and you wouldn't have no toys. No toys. They be gone. Yeah, they be gone. <laughs> if I came out of the fog that day, bye bye toys. My mom, my mom was mad. She's like, why the hell do I keep stepping on the Red Ranger? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's how I was with Legos. I literally, I literally had every, yes, that's Legos. How I was with Legos. Yeah. Right? I had, I had every single Power Ranger, every single Lego set. Mm -hmm. Wait, we still got all the Legos at the house. Yep, in that's the container it. on my shelf. We still got the mm -hmm. Legos. No, like, if I didn't, if I didn't, if I wasn't finding go home, this oh, lucky. No, there ain't no saying. luck. I just knew I can't leave my Legos out no more. Yeah. I had to put them in a container. Oh, yeah, no. Nah. When, I, when, I had cousins, when I had cousins come over, you know, the Bionicles, mm -hmm. I had about 15 of them oh, sitting, yeah. up, sitting on top of my dress room. Oh, my I, goodness. I was the type of kid, I didn't need the instructions. Look at the, scan the box for about 15 seconds. That's the same. All right. Yeah. That's why y'all get around, uh, get along so well, cause he's it's the same, same way. Fucking yeah. direction. <laughs> like I said, scan the box. Yeah, yeah. This is scan the box. I see how. I'm, I'm, like, that I'm, was just, I'm, I'm looking time. at how he built on the box. I'm like, okay. Start me. putting it together. Yeah. <laughs> but it used to make me mad, cause I'd go out and spend a hundred dollars on a box of Legos, and he'd have it put together in 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. How does that happen? Every year on Christmas. I, I, just, I swear I swear to God, I just as, killed off a whole bro, bro, I had a whole yeah, rocket first, ship, bro. And that was the I first had a thing whole rocket did. ship, bro. I had a whole rocket ship. I'll go oh, straight wow. to that hallway and I'm pinning my legs. No, 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 but did you ever have the um Millennium Falcon? No, no bro. I had to I had, to, I had I the police that. station, I had the the spaceship. Look, look, no, I had he, things like that. He had five brothers and sisters, so he didn't. Oh, yeah. I, had, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get all that. But I got, I, yeah. and don't get me wrong, I didn't get what I wanted to get. See, now, I, had an uncle, I, I had an uncle who was a nerd. That, he was a his type of uncle. I called him, hey, I just got this new comic book. Which one you got? Black Panther. He was that uncle that I can call, like, he bought, he bought me every single Star Wars Lego set. Oh wow! Even the um, the Death Star. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, if I, if I had room, I'd have all that stuff. Like, like I envy my cousin right now because they have all that stuff in there. But I was I, I was my that type of kid. I knew my shoes would be super glued right now. Could, no, the you could somewhere. not touch nor break. So anytime like my cousin came over, oh, they were sitting in top of the closet. Let me touch you. Touch it, we fighting. I don't <laughs> care if we cousins. I had Andy, that. We fighting and you ain't going to spend two hours putting it back together. I had that moment too. It took me 30 minutes. I know it's going to take you longer because you don't know what you're doing. I had that moment too. Don't touch my Legos, bro. Oh, buddy. Don't touch them, bro. To buy, that was always an easy Christmas present. Give me some Legos, bro. Give me some Legos. And anytime we went to a store like Target or Walmart and he disappeared, I'm I don't know where to find him. I'm at Legos. Okay. Even about the Legos, I wish I had. Either, either, either I'm looking, either I'm looking at a whole Power Ranger set, or I'm looking at a Lego set. I'm telling you, man. Wow. It was either the red, it was, Legos. it was either the Red Ranger or the Blue Ranger. No other Power Ranger. I only wanted the Red Ranger or the Blue Ranger, and the Megazord. I like the pink. <laughs> my sister liked the pink oh, Ranger. Oh Lord. The Red Ranger. The Wait, red to get Ranger, back on the conversation, now, oh, man. My bad. I know you guys been to y'all depressions and things of that nature mm -hmm. but i feel like personally mm -hmm. i don't think i've ever been depressed 
I disagree. Really? I disagree. I don't think I ever been depressed for real. I, he, I tell him that too. I don't think I ever been depressed because I'm the type of person I let stuff go. I think when Poppy first died, you were depressed. Why you say that? You were very reserved. You got more reserved than normal. Um, you wouldn't come out of the house. Mm, no, I know you're talking about. I know you're talking about. I'm gonna definitely would not come in here. Yeah, for yeah, for a minute we had for a minute I'd had to come up to the house to come see him. Like mm -hmm. coming up, nah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we understood. Yeah, and then once he told me why, oh shit, I have no problem going to the house every day then. I know what you're talking about, but yeah, I wasn't. And I would, if I can go back further than that. Again, I don't know how much I can talk about. How long? How long has it been going? Forty-seven, forty-eight now. So fifty, because you got two more. You're good. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, go ahead. So when we got Omari, when we adopted Omari, and he came to live with us, and Omari was going to visit your mom, mm -hmm. and she wasn't coming for you, mm -hmm. you were depressed. What made you say? What? How did you know I was depressed? What? What did I do to tell you? Oh, you were, you were just really sad, and you could see it all over you. Like it was—it just was not something that you could hide. She would bring him gifts, and she didn't bring you gifts. Or she'd bring him gifts that were appropriate for his age, and she'd bring you gifts that were inappropriate for mm -hmm. his age. So there was stuff that you wouldn't play with, and we'd end up giving it all to him. Mm -hmm. So then I would take you out and take you shopping so that you could have something too. Mm -hmm. And that was very depressing for you. Mm. You know, they and would for call us. and for us. I would no, well, no, I wasn't depressed. I was pissed. Mm -hmm. They would call and they would ask for him and about him, but they didn't necessarily call and ask for you or about you. Mm -hmm. Not the way that they did for him. Mm -hmm. And you noticed every bit of that. Mm. Like I, I never had to say anything bad or negative about them. I, I, and I think you know I never have. Mm -hmm. And I never would. You noticed it for yourself. Mm -hmm. And it came out in your behavior. Mm. That's when you started to act out. Mm. Mm. Crazy situation. Mm. Crazy situation. But besides that, <laughs> <laughs> you know. No, you did it. No, you did. You know, I'm. I feel like I. I don't let things get to me. Now that I'm older, I feel like just if that's what you do, that's what you do. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna do what I want to do. Type. This is. This is me. I think as an as as you come into adulthood, I think you're very even kid. I mean, I don't until somebody pisses you off, no. mm -hmm. and then you go whoosh. It's like as nice as you are, you are that crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm not crazy. That. <laughs> Maybe crazy isn't a, isn't yeah, the not, best word, I'm but not. you're that that uh, opposite mm -hmm. as well. You, you, as 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 nice as you can be, you can be that mean, mm -hmm. that nasty. Mm -hmm. Let's say that mm -hmm. when yeah. you when you get angry. And do you feel like I'm depressed now? Um, no, I wouldn't say so. I mean, I think I, I would say it's probably normal for everybody to have maybe waves of depression. But what I consider, you know, ups and downs, mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. just because of life, and that's how life is. But would I consider you somebody that is depressed? No. Mm -hmm. Do I think you somebody that needs to be on medication? Absolutely not. No. I think you, you're very even, even killed. But as a child, yes, I think you were depressed. Mm -hmm. You know, there was the speech impediment. There was the hearing problem. There was the issues with mom and grandma, mm -hmm. and I think all of that contributed to that. But then you, once you, as you work through it, mm -hmm. you came out of it, and you've been smelling like a rose. Mm. Yeah, but I am. You know me. <laughs> <laughs> you black Superman. Black Superman. Even I feel like even when the car situation happened, I wasn't depressed. Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. Yes, you mm -hmm. were. 
I beg to differ. Why do you say that? Maury, you, do you remember the day that we were at San Francisco General and we were between appointments and they sent us out? Well, no, we went out in the courtyard. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't even look at me or talk to me. Mm. You were that upset. And literally, I have a picture. I'm sitting in the courtyard with my legs up. It just came up on Facebook not too long ago. And I take a picture, and you're behind me, facing the wall. Mm. You are absolutely depressed. You may not realize it, but you really were. And mm. you were worried. You was, if, if nothing else, you was worried about me being worried. But you were absolutely worried, and you were absolutely depressed. And, I, and I'm going to tell you, I was more down then, then that was probably one of the worst years, depressive states of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I was worried. I was worried you were going to lose your leg. I was, first, I was worried you were going to lose your life. Mm -hmm. And then I was worried you were going to lose your leg. I remember me just being positive. Oh, you totally were. I, I mean, was positive when I first team. came and saw you in the hospital... I'm telling you, you looked at me and told me, Mom, I'm fine. I'm Black Superman. And I was like, this little Negro is high <laughs> and tripping. They got you on some good mm -hmm. <laughs> and And you, you stuck by that. You was like, And then another day, I was like, do you remember what you told me? He was like, yeah, I'm Black Superman. This is a couple days later. <laughs> and he remembered what he said, and he mm -hmm. stuck by that. I was, I was, and I was like, okay. In my head, I was, I was determined to walk. He was like, I got this. There's no way. And he literally has defied all odds. Yeah. There's literally. no way. You gonna hold me down? Talking about something you can't walk. I never thought <laughs> back then. I never <laughs> thought that you'd walk the way that you. I mean, you run. You know, you you. I mean, I I just. We would look at you, and I was like. I would. I just. I couldn't see today. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see it. The day I was so done with him was the day I dropped him off at school on crutches, and I came back and he couldn't even find the damn crutches. <laughs> I, I remember that. that. I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> school happened. You know? Nora called me. She was so pissed off. Oh my god. I'm not walking with no crutches. He right? couldn't even find the crutches, Tobo. <laughs> I might walk with a boot. That's all you might see me in, but I'm not walking with crutches, bro. There is no way. And at that point, it was like, okay, I'm going to just stop worrying. I'm, I'm going to just stop worrying. I feel like once I lost some crutches, I stopped worrying <laughs> like, a little bit, if anything. Because I'm like, I'm already walking, so I might. Yeah, and then I for a while thought, because he was having problems keeping his foot up, that he was going to have like a limp or whatever. And then, you know, and then that was gone. And he, he, was, he was working it. He was... He There's was no way. determined, and you know, we just watched him. He was just, he, Maury wasn't having it. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I went to the core. What was that? That was after? Yeah, that was after. That was after. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and let me say this. I want you to know I have pictures from the very beginning all along the way of the process of the leg. I have pictures. And when I tell you that some of the, the pictures from the beginning was literally making me physically ill to look at. It was that bad. It was, it was that bad. bad. That lady was mangled. It was that bad. And having to change the, the dressings and all that. Mm -hmm. And one day I came to the hospital and some little wench was up in there taking pictures of his leg. I almost forgot that was somebody's child. I was so pissed because you know they taking pictures to post them on social media. Mm -hmm. I was so upset, but uh, yeah, like I, I that that is a situation. There's only one other situation with my children that I could say was as bad as or worse than that. And I I just I the depression behind those was enough to make me want to check out. But I couldn't because I had him to worry about. Like, he literally kept me here. That's how bad it was. I don't remember, remember half of that, for real, to be honest with you. 
No, because he was high. <laughs> I don't. He was high as a kite, buddy. <laughs> I don't. Black and mm-hmm. bad. You know, like literally, we slept in the hospital for the summer. Got a whole summer of 2017. We were in the hospital. He came home one week and then turned around and was back in the hospital. How? How? I don't, I don't know. Infection. Mm-hmm. Which they said was a high probability. Like, but he wanted to go home, so we came home and he had to go back. Yeah. I'd rather that one week than the full summer. And the same, for real. Let me take the glass from you. <laughs> that right there, it's a lot going on. But we all have overcome situations. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and the thing is, is that life goes on. Most yeah, definitely goes on. Yeah. You can't stop because you feel... You, I mean, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say it like that. But you shouldn't let that stop you from doing what you have to do. Life can still be beautiful. Most definitely. Okay. And rewarding. So the message for today is what is the message for today? Check up on your loved ones. Check up on your loved ones. Try to find find somebody, have somebody in your life that you can share that part of yourself with. Most well, definitely. You gotta have somebody to share that part. You gotta also watch out because you might tell it to the wrong person and they use that against you. That was another reason why I was hiding you too. Yeah. Yeah. And my I guess my message for today is remember that young children, and when I say young children, I mean people under twenty five don't necessarily have necessarily have the language, especially little kids exactly. to exactly. express depression. Mm-hmm. Watch your kids. Pay attention to your teens. Since this pandemic, we have been through so much. The suicide rates of teens and children have skyrocketed. And it's because they don't have the language to tell you something is wrong. Watch your kids. Watch your kids. Get help. Therapy. And like I said before, I will or I'll get some help to find the link. <laughs> if you can't do nothing else, call 311 and ask for help. And then if we if we could throw that on there, we throw something else on there for a therapist or whatever. But I will find some a number, like you said, 311. I guess that's what you said. That will be in the description at the end, and that will be at the end of the video. So, like I said, and if y'all want to talk to us, you know, hit us in our DMs, you know, we can sit down, have a discussion. You know, we here for y'all. Or find us in the comments. Mm-hmm. <laughs> y'all must definitely drop drop your story in there. Let us right. know what y'all been through. Things like that, you know. Like, like we've been saying, we're doing this for y'all. And we want y'all to communicate with us how y'all feel about what we say. And we want to know how y'all feel about it, too. Have a topic you want us to talk about? Leave it in the comments. Oh. We've, been, they, we've been telling them that. But they ain't playing hard to get. Right. Y- y'all playing hard to get, and I'm I'm gonna have to come to the phone sooner or later. But yeah. <laughs> you better like and subscribe right now. Like and subscribe right like now. Like and subscribe. Share. Like and subscribe. We are the S and B gang. We're here. We're there. We're, we're everywhere. everywhere. We're everywhere. <laughs> like I like I said in the beginning of the video. Hit that notification bell. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. And share it. And we out just there. Yes. And we out just there.